evening from PAP, Public Access Poetry. Tonight, as a guest, fellow poet, friend, and artist, Judy Weber, and myself will be reading our works. First work is called When Things Go Bad. When things go bad, she finds her religion in the bottom of the drawer, snoring first loudly, then softly, underneath the old linen used only annually. She pulls it up by the end of its chain as if there was an end then washes it, bright white clean, sprays it generously with her favorite perfume, and hangs it up to blow on the wash line in his breeze. When it's dry, it clings closely to her skin. She wears it to ward off her demons. One, loneliness. Two, sickness. And three, depression. The abstract and physical eye of the beholder. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Visine is in the watery eye of the beholder. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Freedom is in the unshackled eye of the beholder. Tears are in the eye of the beholder. Prejudice is in the closed eye of the beholder. Disgust is in the eye of the beholder. Witchcraft is in the evil eye of the beholder. Hatred is in the eye of the beholder. Wisdom is in the learned eye of the beholder. Cobwebs are in the eye of the beholder. Envy is in the green eye of the beholder. Truth is in the eye of the beholder. Love is in the starstruck eye of the beholder. Peace is in the eye of the beholder. The simple life is in the unadorned eye of the beholder. The mirror reflects. The eye of the beholder is in the eye of the beholder, is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Or was it dreamed? Even? Steady, the ashes, the dust. How was it you came to glide these step right up folks, cosmic ride, foretold by eons of strange world tongues and minds, a confusing carousel cyclone slide of wordless dreams and demons, forever moving, musing, distraction. And these be the dark hours of midnight riders whose hoofbeats sound even in the light of day. A reach out, reach in, we are here now. And love knows no broken words nor broken men. The one from Nazareth said he would ride again. A cosmos waits, some bones heavy with hate and pain. To be free, to be home free be, it is said. You need only step from the wheel and into the flame. Star children, dear Lord, your star children search the sky with hungry eyes. Strange it is this road we tread upon, where even darkness reflects your light all around us. Passing through valleys uncharted, unknown, Fearful, at times weary, so weary, the stumble, the abyss. Women crying, sighing, dying. Men screaming and teeming with dreams beyond control. Children stand naked, fully clothed. We are starving, gorging ourselves with the thread of those who weave the emperor's new clothes. Pain, God, there is pain since we live in a world that does not hear the cry of woman and child. No, that would not fit the early American decor, the neat lawn, the guiltless quaaludes. My eyes collide with the highway child, alive and shackled to the grass beside the dead garage door. The poet, incoherent, silenced, vanishing through chain-locked Brownsville doors. The artist left with shaking hands, haunted dreams and visions, all muddled by a choice of color, canvas, or food. The dancer swollen and left for crippled dead as she passed this way with only thoughts of spring and kissed each one she thought would receive it well. Sweet Jesus, Rama, Krishna, Jehovah, I know you will draw us near. 
moving in a little closer, simply loving. And your garden's sweet breath shakes mountains, and the very earth your vulnerable creatures sprout from. Breathe easy, touch lightly. Those that yield to the wind will listen to its tales, above the roar of those who turn their heads to scream in filthy beds. Oh, how I miss you, brothers and sisters of the light, cosmic, mystic pilgrims, like a wind-blown song, star-bound, I sing of you tonight. Lord, your star children search the sky with hungry eyes. Home for Jeff. Helicopter fumes past hiccuping smokestack. The smells of rain beat my fingers on the new old typewriter. I'm waiting for you to call, which seems weird to my consciousness, just not in tune with some kind of sweet softness. I need to drink or bathe in the thunder of the lovers of the arts, the musician, the poet, the dancer, the poet, the painter, and I can't forget the anarchist, and I can't hold the wind with a true unending love, and I feel like a Roy Lichtenstein cartoon, and you bring out my insecurities, and the rain caresses through the opened window. Coda. Egyptian princesses dance through all the doors, hoping you find the one. The hair brings it all back. I just found one of your stray hairs on the sweater I am wearing. Memories flood back, remembering hair freshly washed, one lone hair. Eyes swelling with vast bathtubs of tears caressing my prune hands. Amazing. The hair still curls between my fingers as they had before. That orphan lock had to be ebony, springy, and yours I can't escape. I had thoroughly surveyed the landscape. Why, I even mowed the lawn trim the hedges, but now the terrain has moved on to greener pastures, thinking of Pennsylvania cows. Years later, you are surprised for Mitch. It opens with a quote from Heraclitus. One cannot step twice in the same river, for fresh waters are forever flowing in upon you. One cannot afford not to ford the unspoken river nor to step over the stone unturned without trying to see the other side, never quite in view, the dark side of the moon, mind, soul, passion, and that is the stone, and the waters of the river are unpolluted, fresh, new, passionate, the day's flow sparkling. Dancing, swirling, running, free, the gypsy cape and me over rocks, under trees, wild stallion thoughts are circling through my head, my head, racing the wind. Sweet wind, sister wind, how good it is to feel her, to ride her again. No words, no midnight fears or tears, just the sweet earth to hold me as I return light-headed and laughing because she knows where I've been. Portrait of Breezy Point. Anesthetic sky wears a memory smock, sees all the pictures needing only frames. One. Swiftly brush beaked mist soars past pale laundry, <laughs> proclaiming itself to the breeze. Two. To the point. And others jetty rest on brown, on green blue, on black pupil, three, on mind palette. Ebb of geometric smooth voiced dream like the outdoor shower where sand is soap, wearing the heated exclamation, four, the artist's signature, of the fading, rolling lazy, Sunday afternoon. Wedding poem for Walter and Sharon. It's in five parts. One. There's no present that I can buy or give to you greater than the one you have found for yourselves. Two. Hold fast the gift of love and unwrap it gingerly. At first the package is fragile, handled with care, and it will grow strong with time. Three. Always remember, presents have both the giver and the receiver, and take turns at being each. Four. Now the box seems brightly colored. Do not fear if the colors darken or fade. Nothing remains the same. Five. Grow with life. Move with time. Live with love. 
And so it is, and must be. In cosmic flight, I follow thee. To awake this time on a quizzical shore does seem of masterful merchants, promised gold, yes, and bubblegum schemes, of prefabricated princes, too mindful of their wings. I fear the gnashing of bones and teeth, the tangled wreckage of lost hopes and dreams. My eyes reflect the questions of the Sphinx. And so I gather the candles and the incense that we might touch and reach. Invincible Ulysses, I believe you are your own true king. I dream your face and slip my soul within the sweet folds of your own. You allow me to embrace the silent, silver fawn space in which you've dwelt alone. And trust, I pray, to the symphony of love within the fire dome. Let it be, flow free, breathe within without us. A thousand lifetimes flashing and crashing ebbed upon a thousand grains of sand all in the wave of your hand, the curve of one night thigh upon yours. Oh, I dreamed you were a jewel sitting on a golden crown, my head, my head. Dreams and schemes of bubblegum fortune sent sprawling out the door. Ah, but the king's horses are of the finest breed. And the coats of butter velvet in deep shades of royal purple and blue tend to fascinate, intimidate. Yes, they do. But catch the sparks, if you dare, of the sun chariot that passes this way to my love, heading for spaces and places unknown, silent, rich in dreams, but of a different hue. It will call to you. Will you be so brave, so quick, to let that wind run through your hair, to say it doesn't matter? There is no price I would not pay if just for an instant you and I could ride the miraculous morning star coach, heralding far more than the eye can see, than the hand can touch. The choice is yours. Each of us carries it within and are given grace with the coming of every quiet dawn. How long will men not see? Their treasures reveal not their majesty. Sweet Lord, it is of a different hunger I sing in blind nights of grass and chamomile tea. Come and lay beside me. In love's quiet dusk, you will rest the skeptic unraveling thoughts that hold and bind you to things that matter much and little too. And yes, I will attempt to lull you, my brave Ulysses, with scarves and songs and poetry of spirit-seeking trail, elusive, direct, disarming, alarming. Whatever woman is, I shall be, for I have seen the spell lurking in your Merlin eyes, and I am not afraid to gaze. The chariot awaits the midnight climb. Come, take the reins. I grow restless for the ride. And the sunset smelled like red singer. I met the prophet Jin Seng, and he invited me back for talk and tea. I caught a whiff of celestial seasonings. As we ascended Magic Mountain, over hollowed out rocks, we laughed about Lipton, Nestea, and other well-groomed tribes. We talked orange pico, hibiscus flowers, peppermint, and other tongues of the day. 
And when the sunset smelled like red zinger, I whistled and took my leaves. I could never commit suicide. Would you give it up? Split your head for the thoughts to gush out as the oceans of juice cry for release? Yet, would you make razor blade tattoos on the strip of flesh connecting hand to the highway? Perhaps you would rather bite the bullet, suck it deep into your being and have to be no more? Or would you dine on small robber barons wanting only sleep? What kind of oven do you have? You can use easy off tonight. No rubbing, no scouring, as you choke on life's fumes. And enter what? Tell me, what do you expect to find? She is a modern-day sultana. She is a modern-day sultana, having a harem of five males. When she has a problem, each offers caress and advice. But for answers, she always turns to the great rabbit. Turning point. Definition. Place where things go sour. It's raining. I'm numb to the tiny slaps against my abstaining body. I'm crying. And they wrap my tubes up in pretty red dye. Happy 21st. For your birthday present, you get a large gonococcus plant. Don't ask how long it's been growing. Months, it could be years. It is balloon, shouts Dr. Swinging Bachelor. Sure, that's bio 101, and I got an A in sex and sexuality. I smile back until the words hospital and $375 blink neon. Hey, wait. We're talking about me now, not just some freeze-dried frog. I imagine you don't have that kind of money, the good doctor says, in between long-distance phone calls with women friends. My eyes blink rainwater. If you imagine correctly, I whimper wetly. For two insane instants, I think about letting that trailer truck with the driver with a maniacal gleam in his eyes careening rather quickly towards my plug body hit me. I buy some books. No help. I, the plants, catching droplets of salt-stained rainwater, and realize today I can find no cheer. Aversion to the polemics of legalized abortion. The year this was written was 1970. Dear woman, who carried my soul within the veiled nucleus of infinity, and gave me sanctuary in the warm blood of your unconscious mysteries, whose laughter rings loudest when joined with mine, whose cries, all the more anguished, race the universe, screaming, exhausted before the sun itself, forming only the whisper, why? Dear woman, who has rejoiced in the birth of me and those who passed through me, how could we have known the silent, nameless funeral you would watch me attend as I approached the altar of my own womanhood? How could we ever have known there are no sympathy cards in the finest of places? Oh, but this trial, one of many, and of all those who could have come and didn't, you were there, treading softly behind as I wailed my cry, as I ran mad through the universe and screamed, why? Yes, you were there in the echo. You and I sharing the same corner of the dark womb of life. And now, two women might walk under the stars. Take my hand, we are sisters, for both have passed somehow through each other, before and ever after, giving as a river flows. Mother. Repeated hallucinations. I shave pubic bone until the itchiest burn the hair in the ashtray, wear it like a new ring and always feel it there. Straggles get less public as I more get carried, carried away, before the professor mounts the balloon to persuade me not to wash myself so often. You look tanner that way. 
and the tropical radiator is waving and hugging my dragon is absent-minded as a B-1 bomber, throwing the lunch-filled brown bag cleanly into the garbage can. The cat crap bag lounges lazily on the formica tabletop where the two poetry notebooks would never sleep like fish, eyes open again. Tried all the hooks. But the pain dims as the infection grows another month of feverish blood born of the unborn. I lost my blue hand, fan. Don't touch me. Your body smothers my heated hallucinations. Don't your touch smothers me, body. Don't touch me. Your body smothers my heated hallucinations. Playing with. Watching myself, a memory, machine, feel the inkling, feel the tingling, now or now, see the red, pulsating difference, flapping in the wind, see my life, stenciled a page, a book, tongues, flapping, a memory pulsating in the wind, now the inkling, now the tingling, stenciled on tongues, red machine, feel page, feel book, watching my life with playing myself. Playing hide and seek in the garden of your mind, hoping to meet you deeply in a rose or somewhere in the breath of the sweet-smelling earth. Oh, to touch you there, where first you are, than to be so hid in this last meeting. Ah, yes, the trapeze is fine, but so high, and I sometimes forget the net. So, now that I'm here, I'll ride the carousel, sail the rainbow smoke and toke into the Arabian night with musing and cruising with those destined and starbound to fly. The drunken clouds pull down their cotton pants and the sky takes a wicked leap. This postcard will be hand delivered when you return home for Jeff Wright. Thanks for the postcard, Jeff. It was full of you from one side clear through to the other, except maybe for the postmark. And I just realized that you are on a different side right now as I write this on this one. I'm sure that you're coasting along just fine. I didn't even know that you were in California, but I've missed you just the same. I've been holding the skyline down with rows of paper clips and Elmer's glue in all the corners. Is that all right? I haven't felt like doing much of anything. Today is Sunday, and I finally took the great trek downstairs for the mail. Thanks for the postcard, Jeff. I've been writing a lot of poems. And this one is for the viewing pleasure of your very own pair of giggling visual organs to tickle and to say, Jeff, thanks. I'd like to thank Judy. And I'd like to mention next week, Rochelle Kraut and Susie Timmons will be reading. And I'd like to thank Shelley, who is our director of camera, and Greg Masters, who's doing one of the cameras tonight, as he does many nights. And Marge, who's doing the other camera. And who's, I don't, I can't even see who's in the control room. Nick? Yes, no? And what did she say? Neil. Oh, Neil's doing the audio tonight. And David Hurst. Is our direct, is our co-producer. You too, you want to be named also? <laughs> and um, Gary Lenhardt is another co-producer, as well as Greg Masters and Daniel Krakauer, who can't be here tonight, and myself. Do you have another short work? OK. I have another short work that happens to be on the same page, so if we have a couple of minutes. We times it a lot quicker, I guess. Is this the last that you'll inhabit? I wonder if you'll ever walk the floorboards of my poems ever again, now as depressions erode the hills. The telephone line disconnects our lives as the movie reel sometimes rewinds, no longer reruns. They said Sacco and Vanzetti were murdered in cold blood. Is that your idea of an anarchistic goal? Organic peach, all natural, 
Yet one side bears strange bruises where it beats itself for being juicy. It's not that I've had my fill, but my mouth tires of trying to teach man in the pits to talk about it. Can you make one up on the spur of the moment? Well, you have so many there. Well, all right. My wish for you. This is a poem that was given to a number of friends as a birthday present, and I now dedicate it to anyone who's watching the show. My wish for you. May all your days be Sunday, while all your months be June. Every morning sunny, and every evening cool and starry. But most important, may the seams of your jeans hold out for another year. Well. <laughs> uh, this is Public Access Poetry, PAP. Good night. Are we off the air?